a warm good evening to everyone and thank you for attending our virtual information session. Uh, I'm your host, Sonia Mohan, and I'll be taking you through just some brief um, introductions to our programming and we will get right underway. Today's session is uh, thanking the head of the Department of Management Studies, Dr. Dion Greenwich, who is going to be giving you a, a welcome in a, just a few minutes. And apologies from our director of the KFL School of Business and Management, who unfortunately could not be with us this evening, but we'll make sure that we do him proud this afternoon. That's Professor Robinson. So why are you here? We're gonna be talking, we are very excited to be talking about the postgraduate programming in the Department of Management Studies and our KFIL School of Business and Management here at the KFIL campus of the University of the West Indies. So for some of you, you'll be very familiar with the UWA and you may have even have done your undergraduate work with us here at KFIL. We are welcoming you back and we are so glad that you are interested in continuing your academic development and professional development with us. For those of you who are not yet part of the family, we are looking forward to welcoming you in this upcoming academic year, which for us starts in August, and you become a K officially a KFIL Blackbird and engage with us and all the faculty and so on. So why KFIL, why DOMS, why the Department of Management Studies, why KFIL School of Business and Management here at the KFIL campus? First and foremost, we know that everybody's interested in value for the investment that you're about to make in your future. And our programming for what we offer you is second to none around the world. We've done our benchmark studies and our programs run from about 12,000 US dollars to just about 17,000, 17,500 US dollars. Uh, and there is no better comparison that you can have around the world for the quality of the programs and the faculty that you're going to get exposed to and everything else I hear is on the list. So first and foremost on that list is value for your investment in yourself. They say that um, that sounds like a lot of money, but we also ensure that you are able to manage your payments and there are payment plans, there are scholarships that are available, um, there are grants that may be available and so on. And the Barbados government continues to support the Barbadian um, populace in terms of their further education and their areas. We do get a list uh, every year or two of areas of national significance in which the Barbados government does sponsor and we do have sponsors for some other programming from around the region as well. The faculty that you are going to engage with are exactly what I said, they're engaged. They are present, they are interested, they are allowing you to have the access to the knowledge and the skills and the competencies which you can apply almost as soon as the course or courses that you're going to be working with or working through that knowledge is transferable almost immediately. So the faculty, the one thing that we do get kudos for whenever we have that, those posts, course surveys and so on, is the engagement, the interest and the caring of our faculty. I, did I speak first? I should have mentioned first, the qualified faculty who are known through their research, both locally, regionally, and internationally, and they sit on policy making bodies, they sit and they advise government. So the people that you're going to be meeting within the classroom are the persons that you actually see in the in the press. Uh, in the press and so on. And I just got a message that some persons are trying to join from the other link that we had today. So I'm just going to slow down my delivery um, at the moment. As you can see, I'm very excited to be talking about our programs. Relevance and application of the programming that you are going to get exposed to. Uh, Dr. Gr Dr. Greenwich, and for those of you, I'm not calling you yet, Dr. Greenwich, for you to speak, but Dr. Greenwich right now is involved in Operation Seek and Save. For those of you who are outside of Barbados, all of us are trying to manage through and really get on top of the ravages of COVID-19. We are very, very proud here at the KFIL campus to be engaged in the field, not only through the volunteer work of our students on the campus, but in essence, 
every Barbadian household is, the government is attempting to interview every Barbadian household so that we can get a sense on ground of what the COVID-19 situation is. Now, why are we so excited about this and why do we bring this up with our postgraduate programming? Because the persons who were involved in developing the app, in developing the analytics, in developing the dashboards, which are feeding the information almost real time about the households visited, about the persons that they're seeing that may have been contracted COVID-19 and so on. On ground, those were developed in-house by the CAFL campus, by the program, the students involved in our business analytics program. And we could not be more, um, I know I've said this so many times already, we could not be prouder of the fact that our programming is relevant enough to address real world, real time, local, regional and global issues at the point that our interaction can make a difference. So the KFL campus, even though we are missing the vibrancy of the day-to-day -day interaction physically with our students and our colleagues, we are still very, very engaged and we are excited to be welcoming you into that family, no matter which program you have of interest. The business analytics is one that is uh, in the highlight right now, but we see this work right throughout the faculty um, for our postgraduate programming. Flexible, both in terms of matriculating into the program, as well as be determining how you are going to follow the program. So while most of you will be matriculating into the program through your academic background, there are some of you who are mid-career or opting to change career or developing per, um, both professionally and personally to enhance your skills, your knowledge and your competencies. And we don't penalize you for choosing an alternate path to get to this point of your development. So there may be some of you who went the traditional route of your academic studies, but there are some of you who went straight in the, into the field and you develop the knowledge, skills and competencies that we value and hold dear. And you become a very important part of the cohorts which we form within the, within the different programs. And therefore there ain't, for some of you, there are some alternate pathways to matriculate into the programming that can be done on a case by case basis. When we talk of flexibility, we talk about delivery. Now COVID-19 the COVID-19 situation has catapulted us and moved us much faster along a path that we had already started to develop. And it allows us now within quick time, and this is why we were able to respond so quickly to give different modes of delivery for different programs. So we have the traditional face-to-face -face programs, and you would have seen those in the advertisement, which allows the enriching um, classroom interaction and us feeding off of each other's energy within the classroom. And they will always, or that will always be, I think, the preferred method of interaction for, for learning. But we also recognize that you are at different places and it is not always possible to complete or to continue on in a traditional format. And we have a number of programs across a variety of areas that offer online only delivery so that it is accessible no matter where you are or where you're joining us in the world. Whether you are locally here in Barbados, whether you are part of our regional family or if you're part of our global community, we do offer online only options in our programming. And of course, as I said, with the COVID-19 situation, we have adopted, a accelerated our adoption of the high flex model. So what's the high flex model? This is where we have the traditional classroom engagement. So those of you who can join us physically in the classroom can do so. But through the implementation and the deployment of various technologies, we can engage with you no matter if you're sitting physically in the classroom, you join the classroom and that classroom environment either digitally and you become part and parcel of the back and forth and the to and fro and the debating and the exchanges that happen in the classroom real time. You also can both if you are face to face or you're joining um, just digitally or online, or a mixture of both. There may be times that you can get to your face-to-face -face classes, 
but there may be also times that you are engaged other ways and you need to join us online, you have that opportunity to do so. So that's the flexibility that I speak about. And all of those classes, most of those classes are usually recorded. So you can, it's what we, what we, and what we have built um, along the lines of universal de design. So all of our components are accessible no matter how you want to access them. So whether it's the fact that you're going to join us, COVID permitting, and you can't see my toes crossed, but my fingers are crossed that we're beginning to, we, we still have some getting through to get through, but we will. And we will come back to a more engaging, I think I do love interacting with my students in the classroom physically, so I'm quite looking forward to that. But the flexibility is there to ensure that you don't miss anything. So whether it's traditional COVID permitting, face-to-face -face interaction, whether it's online only, providing access no matter where in the world you are, or whether you're joining us using the HyFlex model where you have the opportunity to be in the classroom or join us digitally, or a mixture of both, we are flexible in terms of the delivery. Now, this is not so for every program, but I'll put up a little list shortly to show you which programs are along which models. Now, currently, because of the COVID-19 situation, the cohort that is already engaged with us, they're following by far, by, um, by far and large, the high flex model. We're, well, not the high flex model. We are all online at the moment. So those classes are being delivered digitally. But as soon as we can physically safely get back into the classroom, we will go back to the high flex model. Facilities, and this is where I am looking over, though he can't see me. Can you see me there, Dion? And we have world-class, we've invested heavily in world-class facilities for our graduate studies. Dr. Greenwich is seeing me grinning because he knows that anytime I get to go into our graduate laboratories um, down the hill from the main undergraduate campus where our graduate campus is located, that is one of the places that our students love to be. Uh, you may see pictures on it on our website and we are very proud. It has been a major capital investment for us, but it is paying off in dividends, both with what the, stu you, the students are exposed to, as well as the comfort, even in this environment that we, the lecturers, feel in that room. I mean, some of us try to get in there, even though we don't have, we may have use for any reason to be in there with the labs, just the facilities are world-class. And finally, partnerships. For many of the programs, many of our programs are now aligned with professional bodies. So not only do you get your profession, your designation, whether it's the MBA or the MSc program um, certification, but you are also, the program has been evaluated by many of the accrediting professional bodies within that discipline. And for those of you that are going to be meeting Dr. Greenwich a little later on, he'll get much more into that. So those are just some of the reasons why DOMS, why Santa Carcafil School of Business and Management, and we are the umbrella for us, for all of this, is the UWI. And uh, we will always remember what our vision is as the UWI, to be an excellent global university rooted in the Caribbean so that the knowledge, skills, and competencies, the learning that you are going to apply will always have its grounding here in the Caribbean, but just like the trees that um, grace most of our territories, the roots are deeply um, embedded in the Caribbean, but we spread and we have an impact globally, and this is why you can find graduates all over the world. And our mission, as it says here, to advance learning, create knowledge, and foster innovation, for the positive transformation of the Caribbean and the wider world. This is who we are. We here in the Faculty of Social Sciences, we here in the Department of Management Studies and the Sajikar Kefil School of Business, we are dedicated to your future. We are looking forward to welcoming you to the family that is DOMS and CHSBM. And I'm going to turn it over now for just a continued welcome to Dr. Greenwich. Dr. Greenwich, you're up. I know you're in another meeting at the moment, but we're ready for you. All right. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to KFO School of Business Management and DOMS. Uh, we have integrated and we continue to integrate as units in terms of offering um, quality postgraduate education 
in the region. I, I want to say we are the number one in the region for offering postgraduate education, but I will I would not say that um, openly. So you didn't hear it from me, but we are. So, um, you know, I, I think Sonia just Sonia said it all really. She, she really said it. I, I know a number of things that she was speaking that, we, that came to mind, especially as the experience that you will have with us here at the KFL campus. And what we have been doing over the years as we grow our as we grow as we grow our graduate programs, as we continue to develop new graduate programs and, and within within the university. Within DOMS and, and CHBM, for example, you know, over the last I would say year or so, we, we have eleven new graduate programs. So there's there, there are eleven new graduate programs. Um, in, in the Department of Management Studies and, and the CHSB collectively um, over, over, the, over the last year or so. And they all developed strategically to, to ensure that we continue to, to be not only um, world class, but to have global relevance. And, and that is important. And we, we want our students, and some of them were revised because we continue to be aligned with a number of our international bodies and associations. I think that's, if it's one thing that you take away from, from what we do is, is to be able to, as a, in terms of our graduate education, to link with our professional bodies, to ensure that when persons finish the degree, it's not that you just have a degree, but that you can, but that, that, but that you can have your professional designation. So for example, those persons who are interested in HRM, you know, we, we our our program is accredited by SHRM, uh, which 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 is the the largest uh, uh, professional body for HR professionals globally, I uh, and, and we have that accreditation. In fact, when our students leave that program, just as an example, they are able to go into um, that body at a particular level. Just have, they just have to do the exam for that body, and they, so they don't have to do the, all the courses and so on. Once you finish our program. You can enter in same thing with marketing. We our, our marketing master's program it um, has that uh, and so on. You know, you know, we have we have recently revised and revisited our our project our project management program. We, we have we have recently we have recently we recently revised our project management program to ensure that we can continue to offer persons that professional um, element afterwards, especially in, ter in, terms, of the P in terms of the PMP uh, and so on. So, 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 so we, so we look, so, so, so that is critical for us. And then, and then again, we have our new international business program and, and that we tra training that with, with our trade, with trade and therefore our, our um, center for trade here on the campus. Uh, trade policy is also important to us as the world moves on. So, so we are thinking more globally uh, how we are able to, to bring programs into, into being. We have our, our new MSc uh, information systems program, management program as well. And that, and that is interesting because that twins very nicely with our business analytics program in terms of what we want to be able to accomplish as we recognize there's a digital age and digital transformation and uh, uh, what businesses must be able to do in order to make um, decisions. So welcome to the department. I hope that I'm not just welcoming you to the seminar, but I hope that after this evening, we are going to be welcoming you to our family as, as students, as postgraduate students. You know, we, as I said, we, for me, I see postgraduate as very, very important. I know I became head and Sonia, Sonia, Sonia mentioned it. We, we made a lot of we, you know, investment by, over the years. Um, I was determined, and, and, and my team, which is, which is Sonia and a number of other, all of my departmental members uh, in terms of the vision, and that vision was to build a world-class uh, postgraduate, and that's what we have been doing. Most of all postgraduate programs, when, when you go um, the UD, UD, UD serve and, and, other, and other ranking bodies, you see that we are ranking, you see that we see that we are very much up there in the rankings, in the, in the individual programs, rank, ranking very heavily. So for example, in what they call Region 9, Latin American and the Latin America and the um, and and the, and the and the Pacific and so on regions. You you, you see that we are I'm sorry in the Atlantic region. We are we are we are ninth, for example, in project management and and so on. And we have we have our ranking. So we are we are very we have done well in terms of. So when we come to you this evening, we are coming to you and saying to you, we want to join us here because we believe we have some quality programs that you can benefit from. 
and the fact that we don't only we're not only saying so, but we look at the 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 the, the world institutions. We look at the accredited bodies that and the professional bodies that our programs are, are linked to. So whether it is the ACCA uh, accounting and finance and better program, whether it's going to be MSC program where we where we look at our relationship with, with CFA. Regardless of our programs, that is that being described. That so the testimony to the to the global um, nature, and not only that, but but to the to the fact that our programs are high quality in what in what we want to put up there. So I welcome you to our programs. I don't want to talk too much because I want I'm excited to to want to, to to go into your breakout rooms, whether it's going to be the CSSB room, uh, or or the or the or the dorms room. But because it's CSSB room or the dorms room. I can tell you a little secret. <laughs> you, you, it's one room, right? Eventually, because it's, because when you come into our programs, the two, the two, the students from both sides do courses together. So, you, so you will find that throughout the year, you will meet each other, you will, you will, you will learn from each other, you will do courses together, and, and so it could be already one across the board. So, for example, the the new MBA program, which is which is which is which is offered to um, the KFO School of Business and Management. Has really been developed and, and, and nurtured within DOMS as well. So it's really this week. I'm not going to be in that room with you this evening, but I'm currently the one who will be who will be um shuffling that program along for the next academic year. But I leave you in the, in the very trusted hands of Sonia and, and Pamela in that room. And those of you who come into DOMS, as Sonia will tell you, I'll talk with you and my and my AA from the DOM side, Martha. So I think I just want to say welcome. Thank you for joining the seminar. But most importantly, as soon as you leave here, if you if you have not sent in that application, just think worldwide, global, and you want to be part of that family and do that and, and do your application. Don't even wait till you finish. You can start typing that application now, but just kidding. You get news from us, take the information, and we want you to go away and, and meet and, and do the application and come into our programs here at the KFL campus, quality programs. So Sonia, back over to you. Thank you so much, Dion. And uh, yes, we do have a family here. So no matter if you're choosing a program from the Cayfield School of Business and Management or the Department of Management Studies, several of those courses that comprise the program, we have a mixture of cohorts. We have a mixture of students in particular programs, in particular courses within the program. So you will get to interact with the counterpart parts. If you think of it as siblings, you do interact with each other. There are some questions in that came in, so I'm gonna, I, I answered some of them by type, or you got a response typed, but some of them I'm going to answer live. So are scholarships only for citizens of Barbados or are they available for other Caribbean um, citizens? So it depends on the scholarship. The government of Barbados sponsors, rather than think of it as a scholarship, sponsors particular programs. So there are programs, um, for example, finance and economic studies, that MSc program is sponsored by the government of Barbados for Barbadian citizens, although it is open to everybody in the Caribbean or anybody who wants to, to pursue that program. The government of Barbados also has identified areas of national significance where a Barbadian citizen pursuing those programs who gain entry to those programs will be sponsored by the government of Barbados. However, there are scholarships that are available to everybody, um, particularly those in the Caribbean. So it will depend on how you are, it, it will depend on the scholarship that you're thinking of. And on um, application, you can actually put in your scholarship. You can put in your application for a scholarship as well. The faculty on a whole um, does offer some scholarships or some support. It, uh, I don't have the figures for the upcoming academic year, but we do anticipate offering at least partial scholarships, uh, a few partial scholarships across some of the programs. The forthcoming, do we mean them to be available? Yes, we have, all of the documentation is in, it's working its way through our quality assurance mechanisms here at, at, at the university, not just the campus, it actually goes to higher bodies in the university to get that approval. And we are highly anticipating that they will be ready for the upcoming academic year. Applications close on June 30th, and we are hopeful, very, very hopeful that we will get a positive response. And you will, once they are approved, you'll see them listed in the offerings that are available or the options that are available. 
If, however, you're interested in a partner or complementary program, and the program you're really interested in is not yet approved, it says forthcoming, but you see one that is comparable, please put in your application because once that approval is done, then we can do a quick change of option to the program once it's approved. For many of the programs, um, so example, the business analytics with aviation management, while we're waiting for that to be approved, business analytics is ready. And the many of the core uh, course, yes, Dion? Yes, Sonia, I, I, I forgot to tell you that um, those, those, that has, it has, it was approved. It was approved. It has been approved now. Oh, it's approved? Yes, it is. Excellent. Right. So we're <laughs> going to update the website. But you will, even though our site might be a little dated now, this is this is recent beyond. This is since last yes. week. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm a day or two behind, but I'm that's great. But the the options therefore will be available on the application site. So once they are approved, they are available on the application site for you to come in. And are there plans to offer the F financial management in the upcoming academic year? Yes, I see no reason why we are not offering financial management, Dion. Well, I'll talk more about that in the in, in okay, dorms room. Okay, in the dorms breakout room, don't let in me step on Dion's toes. <laughs> the dorms breakout room will be asked some more there. Um, so that the MBA, the, the Dion, before we go and we wrap up here so that we can get people into their private sessions, can you give us a broad overview of the differences between the MBA and the MSc programs uh, besides okay. the entry points for the programs? Right. So besides the entry points, which um, for the for the MBA, the major, the major, the major difference will be that you have to have at least three years uh, working experience. Whereas MSc, you can come straight out of undergraduate and, and, and enter into MSc program. Uh, I think the yes, difference is talking about that practical end of it because we, although although I, I'm always very cautious these days of using that very um, simplistic difference you will find um, on the World Wide Web or as you read up on the on the difference between the MBA and the MSc. Normally, persons see it as one taking more theoretical and philosophical concepts versus the MBA, which is supposed to have more of a practical uh, um, component. More, more practical in terms of the teaching. But, but, but I will, what I will say to you is that, um, you know, as we move closer towards what, what a model of, of, of a business education, what you will find is that even the MSc programs tend to have these days some practical components to that as well. So, so, so that, you know, you, you have your client projects, you have, the, you have your practicum, or you have your, your, your consultancy project within um, MSc programs as well. But when you, so when you think of it as a practical nature, they, 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 they're more thinking about the applicability um, the, the, uh, to, to workplaces at the time. So that's why I said I don't want to say it simplistic, in that simplistic way because uh, the MSc programs also do that. So the most of it really comes, stems around entry. It stems really around the, the fact that one, you need three years experience and then as a result of that three years experience, you know, you know, you know, we, there are certain, there are certain um, ways that we will pitch that, that, that course to, to bring in more of what we call the experiential element to it, uh, recognizing therefore that we want to see more apply. So for example, where we say MSc program, the, the, the assignment might be, um, say, the, say the assignment might be an essay or the assignment might be a, a, a a particular um, exam in, in, in the MSc program, you may have more case-based um, assignments. Although, sorry, in the MBA, you may have more case-based assignments. Although in the MSc program, that kind of that would be the um, that would be the situation as well. So I I am always wanting to say that these days, as you go and really you realize what I'm trying to say is that these days the differences between them has really narrowed. To where there's not much of a difference other than who you are targeting. So the MBA really targets working people, persons who have that working experience, who have been who have been um, professionally employed for 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 a period of time, and that is really the target market. The MSc or dual targets as well persons who are working. Their, their target is, is is not necessarily streamlined in that way. 
and therefore, and then in the NBA, what you can have, which we also have in Sprite Stream, the MBAs, is that executive MBA, which now is different from the MBA, the executive MBA, and I think we are, are, are the ones we are continuing with into the executive MBA. So you're going to have the executive MBA um, healthcare management, the executive MBA in public sector management, the executive MBA in IMBA. Those are persons then who are at a particular level of the organization. So, so to get into say normally executive MBA program, you, you you know you're looking at professionals who have managerial experience who have been who are in managerial positions and so on. So, so so that is somewhere the difference is really is in the entry these days, uh, more so than, than anything else. I hope I was able to explain it. Thank you, Dion. And there are some other questions in the chat that you're going to address in the in the DOMS room, like what's available, where can they get more information, um, and so on. And you just talked about the entry point for the executive MBA, uh, the self-financing programs. There, remember that MSC project management was self-financing, has always been self-financing, but sponsored by government, and whether that continues to be so, as well as the international MSC and international business. So those are the two questions in the chat for those. And for most of the brochures, most of the information, uh, this website that you went on to, uh, that, you, that you registered through to get to this webinar this evening, provides the direct links to each individual program. And uh, again, we will put that up in the chat once we go to our new rooms. Now, we had such an overwhelming response to the sessions, and this will not be the last one we are holding. You anticipate that we're going to be holding more of these as we as the year progresses, especially as we come closer to the deadline date. For those of you who are interested in programs in the Department of Management Studies, I'm inviting you now to look into the chat, and you will see a link to that Zoom meeting. So I am about to say goodbye to those of you who are in the, who are going, who are interested in programs in DOMS and we will meet him with Dr. Greenwich. The link is there for you. Um, so Dr. Greenwich, you don't have to come back to this webinar. And like I said, I'm so looking forward to meeting and engaging with you as you become part of the KFIL family, part of the SOSAI family, and particularly part of the DOMS and CHSBM family. And I don't use that word lightly. We do look out for each other and so on. And to ensure that you are able to meet your own personal and professional goals as you engage with us. So now if you take a look in the chat, there are two links. One for those of you interested in the programs for the Department of Management Studies, as you can see listed on your screen, any of the traditional programs that are listed there, as well as all of the high flex programs, except for the MBA would be, you'll be meeting with Dr. Greenwich now. Everybody else, which means everybody who is interested in the online only programs or those who are interested in the MBA, you have that managerial experience or background. Um, you are at that stage of your career where you've had that, that, like I said, experience and you're interested then in the MBAs or the particular areas that we are going to be specializing in for the MBA programs. Please join me in the Zoom link. That is, I think that's the last Zoom link that we had. So again, for the DOMS room, you're seeing the Zoom link, the meeting code ending 5898. And those who are going to be joining me in the CHSB room, the meeting ID is ending 2223. So again, thank you for coming with us. And just one last question for Erwin. If you are an anticipate, if you anticipate graduating in this upcoming May, June, yes, you can apply. We will just pend your, we will hold your the decision pending your results. So don't hesitate. If you are interested right. in coming into the to the MSC programs, you can put in your application now and we will process once your program is complete from the BSC. And normally you can also get from us. So once we evaluate, because once we pull your transcript and we evaluate, we can make a decision. We, we give you a, condi uh, a conditional okay. offer and that, will, and that will say, um, accepted pending um, graduating, meaning accepted pending the completion of your of your degree. Yes. And my last point here for Felicity, who is finishing up or has an honors degree 
in BSc Accounting. The MSc Accounting and Finance with the ACCA embedded is just for you. It means that you can pursue your, M your MSc qualifications as well as further your professional development and graduate with two, um, making not only the MSc, but also making quite a dent in the ACCA certification as well. So that's it for me tonight. Again, thank you so much for coming out. We look forward to having more conversations with you. So you will see us again. And we hope to have many of the, the individual coordinators to engage with you in a smaller group session. But thank you for taking the time to come with us. So click through the link, CHSBM. I'll be there just in a moment. And those of you with DOMS, um, Dr. Greenwich, they're coming to you now. Have a good evening. See you, Dion. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, Sonia.